Lance Velchik here from CinemaCon 2024. Of course, Las Vegas, as you notice, this gorgeous room, right, huh? I got the penthouse. <laughs> Only the best for Joe Blow. <laughs> you know it, guys. It's delicious, though, thank you. I'll just go fuck myself. So I was very lucky enough to witness the Warner Brothers presentation today, right? And I think there's a couple things I really want to talk to you about that I think would be interesting in terms of the uh, horror genre. First being Beetlejuice. Now here's the thing. I loved Tim Burton. His mid 80s to I'd say mid 90s even was a run that is unparalleled. It's one of the best. But he's kind of fallen off. And that's not something that, you know, I, I want to drag him for. We all live life and it happens. I mean, Coppola, you know, but when it comes to Beetlejuice. Hopefully just the Megalopolis yeah, but, on the back. We'll see. Well, okay, you're a good point. <laughs> but the point of this is that Beetlejuice is something that I always felt was a perfect time capsule at the time. Beetlejuice is just that late 80s weirdness that I don't know could be replicated. And when I saw the first trailer, I didn't like it. You're working with a professional here! I didn't like the idea of taking the afterlife approach of making this sort of de depressing, dark, uh, reverent, sort of soulful take on Beetlejuice. I mean, you mean the movie, the goofy movie with Michael Keaton? We got a bald wing of Gina Davis, you said, but we're gonna we're gonna take that and be like, no, it was it was soulful. So I don't know. I didn't I didn't I hadn't I wasn't feeling it. Now the thing is, is what we saw at CinemaCon 2024 was the rest of the trailer. And this is where it gets interesting. That chunk that you saw is still the same. We see the bridge, we see the house, we see the, the bicycle. Like, oh. Day -o. Day -o. Day -o. But then the rest of the trailer continues and it becomes more horror. It's darker, uh, filled with practical effects. We have the, the, the snake and stop animation. We have a lot of uh, gags done in camera and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, I think Burton might be back. Here's the thing, in the end of the day, we had Justin Thoreau, we had William Dafoe. Look, he could be playing a villain. He had scars, uh, clearly dead in the afterlife, looking for Beetlejuice. Not too much in her take, but with Catherine O'Hara, she's, she's back, she's laughing, having a good time. The vibe of the trailer that I saw gives me hope. Now, am I gonna say it's awesome? I do not know. Tim Burton has not done anything good in a very long time, and I don't mean that as any disrespect. He's done more than I ever will, but let's be clear, Big Fish was the last thing that had sold. Here we are today. But Keaton was on the stage tonight, and he was selling this and dancing like I've never seen before. Listen, we all get paid to do what we do, but he went above and beyond, and I don't believe Keaton's the kind of guy, especially at his age, that you're just gonna pay off to go and, you know, part my French below the crowd. So what I saw gives me hope, and especially behind the scenes scenes that we saw was all about being practical. And as Keaton said in the theater that I saw, he only came back if him and Burton could try to replicate and do what they did back in the 80s, which is gonna be weird, goofy, and practical. So we'll see. Next would be M. Night Shyamalan's Trap. Now, let's be honest, uh, Shyamalan is kind of one of those guys that lost it, right? I mean, I saw Sixth Sense when it came out. Theaters on Disney World, loved it. All the way until, uh, I would say The Village, to me personally, was when I realized, you know, maybe it wasn't Lane the Golden Knights. He's human after all. But the thing I do like about Shyamalan and I respect is that at least he has a vision and at least he's doing unique interesting, weird movies, even if they don't work always for me personally. It's raining men. Hallelujah, it's raining men. But when it came to, um, you know, the visits, uh, split, glass, knock at the cabin. Now, I'm not saying they all work, but let's be honest, I think he was at least trying to learn from his mistakes of the past and not putting the twist as the most important part. He's trying to tell stories. And that's something he does really well. Maybe the dialogue may be stilted. His ideas might be a little grandiose for what he could pull off, but hell, I'd rather have you try than just sort of like repeat the same thing. Now with uh, Trap, Josh Hartnett plays this father that brings his daughter to essentially the Taylor Swift, played by um, Shaman's actual daughter, Sarika. Now here's what makes it interesting. The trailer lays out the entire idea of the movie. There, there, if there is a twist, I don't see it happening in this because it looks like it's just more of an old fashioned 90s thriller. There's a serial killer, a butcher, in attendance at this concert and the cops have gotten wind. So the, the actual concert is a trap. 
and they surround him. Here's the best part. Josh Hartnett, this loving father, you know, he's just taking his kid out, having a good time. He's the killer and realizes that he is being hunted. And that, that's the trailer. That's the idea. Now here's, here's what I love. That could have been the twist, but no, it's the point of the plot that he needs to figure out how to get out because he is now wise to the cops coming in. That's what Shyamalan should be doing and that's what I'm excited for. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna be hesitant. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be great because you never know, but he's piqued my interest and you know what? I gotta give him credit. And last but not least is gonna be uh, Shyamalan's daughter, Ashana, doing an adaptation of the book into the film, The Watchers. Now there's a, a teaser trailer out that doesn't say much, and I'll be honest, what I saw at the Warner Brothers presentation doesn't do too much more than that, but it does tease some very interesting ideas. So essentially Dakota Fanning is living in Ireland and she somehow gets into an area, and this is where it gets very sci-fi and I like it, where everything shuts down, the car dies, and a door opens up and she must get inside before it's too late. And while we're in there, we kind of learn uh, that some beings from somewhere else have come and are using us as a zoo. And what I liked about what I saw is that they're not trapped in a room, they get to explore, but it seems like there's rules that are set up that they know and have to follow, and by breaking them brings them sort of uh, some sort of danger. Clearly taken from her father, but let's be very fair, her father's really good at tension. And I got the same vibe as this. It's weird, uh, supernatural slash sci-fi, uh, and I still have no idea what it's about, but everything it showed me got me more interested. And you know what? That's the point of a trailer. And it looks like uh, if Shaman's daughter is gonna pull off what Lynch's kids and or Cronenberg's kids have done, I think we're gonna be in a good spot. Again, I'm always cautious. I'm not gonna sit here and say everything is gonna be amazing. I always wanna hold off on judgment until I actually see the movie. But the full trailer kind of hooked me. And let's be honest, Shaman came out, introduced it, and him and his, da his daughter actually sang too, a gorgeous voice. And very impressed. Uh, I always appreciate people that are good public speakers and that have a sort of a connection with an audience, they, warm and charming, and they, they sold me a little. So we'll see. But I'm very interested based on the novel and based on what I saw. I believe The Watchers is something we should keep an eye out for. And then last but not least, we had a little montage. Started off by Jack Black, a uh, big D fan, of course. You know, Pick a Destiny is fantastic. And let's be honest, HBO little show was fantastic. Weird looking thing, the horns on it made of green ivory or some shit. So always loving Jack Black, but they uh, showed us a couple of random clips and uh, the new Final Destination, uh, Bloodlines, not much, but we had a little onset like clip and they were basically saying it's gonna be one of the bloodiest, one of the wildest, one of the craziest. And that's a series that I've always kind of appreciated as I got older, cause you know what? As the world gets more, uh, you know, a little more, let's be honest, tight ass, I appreciate movies that are just gonna be gory, goofy and fun, so. We'll see, I'm excited, let's rock it out. The last couple were just ridiculous, and you know what, let's have a good time and uh, get some good kills. I am a big fan of The Crow. I grew up with Brandon Lee. Uh, I read the James O'Barr comic series in high school. It's a very important movie to me. I did not love that first trailer. Shit on me. Shit on me! And funny enough, when Lionsgate was introduced and the gentleman that actually showed us the trailer knew that to be the case and pitched this movie with these words, eh, give or take. This is a reimagining. It's not meant to go against, compete, or be compared to the original. So what I saw didn't blow me away. We had more of a focus on the love angle between Shelley and Eric Draven. It looks like they were in some sort of corrections facility and that they met during some sort of therapy sessions. They eventually get out. I haven't done anything with my life like you have and live some sort of a life before they die. So we definitely have more of a backstory. And that, I, I'm, not at, uh, I'm not against. The problem is, and I think what's gonna kind of make or break this movie is, Scars Gar is playing a Gen Z type of character. I, he has the tattoos, his, his sort of like New York accent. It's very, just sort of, and you know what? I'm not feeling it at all. You don't feel good. Jelly, what's the matter with you? at all, I, I found it actually kind of grating. And I think that's gonna make or break this because if you can dig that guy, if you can dig that vibe, if that's something you're into, you know? If you're into that kind of music and that lifestyle, hey, maybe this is for you. And I, I think that's the whole point of this. People like me, the Gen Xers, it, it's not our time, we step back. This is clearly for a different generation. It's more violent, it's more aggressive. They're focusing a lot more on the pain aspects. Eric Draven is feeling everything. He doesn't get back up, it's not like, Brendan Lee laughing at Fun Boy in the bedroom, right? <laughs> 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 the 
this, it's a slow build and it feels like it's some sort of penance. Like they're paying for something. There's definitely a little hint of a religious aspect. We have a, more of an idea of the afterlife, or at least the way station in which Eric Draven is at and gets his sort of orders. You know, almost like the Skull Cowboy that was cut from the original movie. It seems like they're taking that aspect only uh, via the afterlife. Concepts they don't hate, but again, this is gonna ride or die on how well Skarsgård can play off this character. And to me, so far, I'm just not a Post Malone guy. And the next I saw something that uh, I've been kind of curious about, Never Let Go. I'm a big, big Alexander Aja fan. In fact, it was Mr. John Fallon, The Arrows Review, which got me to go see High Tension in the wasteland that is Joliet. And if you're a fan of the Blues Brothers, you should know Juliet Jake uh, is not a classy guy and that's not a classy place. That being said, I followed his career forever. Between Piranha 3D, uh, his amazing adaptation of The Hills Have Eyes, I really enjoyed Crawl. Uh, the guy the guy knows how to have a little bit of fun and he's also very, very cynical and he has that new French extreme vibe that I've always been a fan of. This movie, Holly Berry and her two kids are in some sort of post-apocalyptic land, right? This is the world's over and they're in a cabin. The only way they can leave this cabin is if they attach these ropes themselves. And this is where they get their food, the plants, this is how they sort of like scavenge the land. But there's something else out there. There's these beings, these monsters, right? We don't know exactly what. If you unattach from this rope, you're dead. And it seems the story is, is whatever is in these woods, whatever is out there, is trying to convince one of these kids, because there's there's two kids, there's twins, that the rope is a foolish idea. There's, there's nothing out there. The mom's wrong, of course, you know? Exactly. And so then we get a montage of these crazy intense things. The vibe reminds me very much of old school Aja. This has that sort of new French extreme extremity vibe. And Holly Berry looks like she's pulling it off quite well. We'll see. I like Aja. I, I trust him. This is one of those, I think it's going to be like Bird Box, where concept's cool. It's all about execution. So, yeah, we'll see. And that brings us to Universal. So I would say the most important thing I saw today was Nosferatu. Uh, Robert Eggers, everything he's done I've loved. You know, The Northmen, The Witch, Lighthouse, all weird and sort of like, uh, I would almost say a little punk rock, like a little off the, the beaten path is what I've always liked. You're fond of me, lobster. So you. This, oddly enough, looks slightly more mainstream, but just as weird and dark. There's a lot of gothic imagery, and I was very happy to see that. I'm not surprised, but you never know. I, I'm more of a cynic, so I always assume I'm going to get screwed, but uh, it didn't happen. Like Dark castles, stormy skies, that kind of thing. But when the movie kind of kicks in, there's a this visceral meanness that I was surprised by. Uh, you don't get a lot. We see a little bit of uh, Holtz like, flipping out. I almost thought it was transformation, but probably not. Um, you get a little bit more, only a little of Defoe's, um, Ed William Defoe's Van Helsing. Uh, he only has a couple lines in this, but how does Defoe ever disappoint? It's because he doesn't. That's why he's still around. That's why he was walking around smiling. That's why he's amazing. Uh, totally though, this is what I was hoping for. It looks mean. Without really showing anything, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, we don't see Skarsgård. We don't see, we don't see Nosferatu, but the shot that we get is this kind of silhouette where he has like the, the cloak, the cake kind of thing. You know, it's all in black. And it's the foe's reaction shot that sold me. Cut the title card. So at this point, I'm not going to watch any of the trailer. I'm there for Christmas. And yes, it's a Christmas movie because why not? Why not? Yeah, take the family. Get the kids. You know, I have to say, one trip, enjoy. A lot of great things like uh, soda pop. Big, Big fresh, fresh can, can of soda pop. Uh, next is Speak No Evil. It's a remake of the, uh, I believe, Danish film from 2022, which I have not seen. And story-wise, we really don't know what's going on, but I do always love a, a good old-fashioned domestic thriller. And this kind of has that sort of like, uh, I would say old 90s vibe of the setup, but then it gets sort of like nice in 2022. This had uh, almost a barbarian feel to it by the end. We don't know exactly what they're doing, but um, James McAvoy and his wife are these charming sort of, uh, you know, uh, effluent people that befriend this couple. And as the, the trailer goes on, you realize like that clearly they are not who they say and they're into much darker stuff. They have this son that in the entire trailer, they kind of make uh, seem like he has some sort of disability, but by the end, they hint at the reason he's quiet and doesn't do much is because they cut out his tongue. You got me. 
you got me, you know? I, I'm wavering, but uh, that was uh, it was a good sell. So we'll see. I don't know much about it. I'm going to actually probably not see the original first, only because you never want to read the book before you see the movie. The movie's never going to be as good. So I'm going to check it out. Uh, and McAvoy's awesome. The Scottish are great. Great people. Even part of the Scottish guy, you have a great time. And then last is Lee Winnell's Wolfman. Here's the thing. I loved Upgrade. That's it. I did not like The Invisible Man. I, it was a movie made of dumb decisions for uh, a little bit too long. That doesn't mean he's not a good director. And so in terms of look, I gotta be honest, I was impressed by how mean the Wolfman looked. Christopher Abbott basically plays this dad talking to his daughter. And it's more of like a, a kind of a clip trailer. I'm not exactly sure if this is gonna be what's gonna be released, but it's what they showed us. And his daughter's like asking about death and, and dying. And it's sort of this uh, parallel because he's talking or trying to comfort his daughter, knowing that whatever's inside of him, whatever's inside of him is essentially death. We cut to a bunch of clips of action, people running scared, and then we see him sort of almost transform before it hard cuts the title. Tone-wise, it looks pretty cool again. I, I gotta be honest, dude, Universal's uh, CinemaCon 2024 has the theme of their horror movies seem to be visceral and sort of intense, and that is my kind of horror. It's still early, but for the first time in a long time, I'm excited. All right, let's talk about A Quiet Place, Day One. I really enjoyed Krasinski's original take. Uh, yeah, the, the rules got a little iffy at the end, but I, I like a good sort of small thriller with a cool concept. You throw in monsters, aliens, same thing. A, a thing that's gonna eat you from another planet, I'm down. Uh, I didn't quite love the second. I kind of felt like it was more the same. You know, a lot of people did. I didn't really feel it. I think this entry might be taking it in the place that it needs to go. My uh, you know, partner in crime, Mr. Chris Bumbray, was with me at the panel. And of course, I want you to check out Joe Blow videos for their coverage. And we were discussing it, and to me, it felt like they're taking this in the aliens direction, where the, the horror is still there. People are getting eaten, people are getting killed, but it, it's definitely more of a set piece film. Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> Lapita Nyong'o plays just this sort of New Yorker, but she's in the city when the aliens finally come. They rain down like meteors from the sky, and then everything just goes, pardon my French, batshit crazy. They become quarantined in New York. The army destroys all the bridges and the boroughs, setting them in one place. In the movie, she meets Joseph Quinn. I don't think they know each other from what I saw. It seems like two strangers sort of come together for a greater good. And it's about them trying to get out of the city. There's a really cool part in the trailer where they're getting into a skyscraper, right? And they're going through the revolving door and it's jammed on this piece of trash. And the creak it makes wakes up and sends the monsters and they're crawling down the skyscraper to come get them. It, it, it kind of got me. I was like, okay, hey, this is it. Let's do it, you know? If you live in a city, as I have, it's hard to get around without making noise. In a farm, you could shut up. In a city, everything makes noise. So I'm like, okay, that's something to play with. I'm not sure if they're gonna pull it off, but I, I'm more optimistic than I was when I heard the announcement in the cast. This looks like it could be fun. It looks like it's going in the right direction. Next is Smile 2. Smile 1 is a little bit of an indie hit, you know? I gotta be honest, I avoided it at first. I wasn't really sure if it was gonna be good. It surprised me. I, this trailer looks, it looks cool. This is also kind of going for a, a bigger budget, sort of more grandiose idea. Naomi Scott seems to be playing some sort of Taylor Swift mega superstar. And she somehow gets sort of involved in this and everybody around her seems to be changing, you know, the entity, the, the curse. Story-wise, we don't know a lot, but I could tell this is from the point of view of a pop star. And for some reason, I find that kind of interesting. As somebody who's been to a lot of concerts, I mean, you know, from Tom Petty to David Bowie, like I, I can't imagine the lifestyle of somebody that famous and to put them in a position where, you know, full of yes men and fans and they could all be sort of infected, they all could have the curse. Uh, it's kind of fun. There's a scene, I think it's gonna be the, the big scene of the trailer, where we're in a small hallway and it looks sort of like a backstage, uh, you know, a corridor. And it's filled, filled with people crawling over each other, smiling as, you know, the pop star, Naomi Scott, is backing away. And I was like, okay, that, that's, that's kind of set piece I'm into. So, We'll see, um, you know, I, I feel more optimistic. Every time a sequel's announced, I'm always like, ah, could have just been a really cool first movie, a, a good single story. Does everything need a sequel? No, absolutely not. But uh, a, a Quiet Place prequel and now Smile 2, they both look pretty good. So we'll see, man. Mr. Uh, Mr. Cynical Lance Velchik over here is uh, having a change of heart. So that's it for that. And then let's get on the big stuff, guys. Disney. And that leaves us with Alien Romulus. Now, let's just 
have a heart to heart. When is the last time we had a good alien movie? Best case scenario, Covenant and Prometheus were very controversial. And listen, maybe there's arguments for moments of those, but uh, it's been far too long since we had a competent, well-told story with great characters. Uh, and that's something that's been lacking. And I, I gotta be honest, like really, Scott kind of lost his way. I like Fetty Alvarez. I think the Evil Dead remake is one of the best remakes in my generation. And I had a little bit of hope, you know? The first trailer, it was good. But here's the thing, all the trailers are good. Covenant had a cool trailer, Prometheus had a cool trailer. You know, it, it, you gotta be a little more cautious. But we got to sh we got a scene, we got a clip, an extended clip shown to us. Except between the original Alien and Aliens, this one has uh, this kind of crew of salvagers kind of go around taking stuff. We have a scene that takes place in some sort of a medical facility, right? And in this facility, they are breeding face huggers. And there's a little kind of containers and almost like vacuum sealed. That's real interesting, kind of a cool concept. And then there is a droid, an android. But unlike the ones from the earlier movies, you know, via like Lance Henriksen, this is going for far more of an alien isolation vibe. And let's be honest, it's probably one of the best, uh, if not the best alien game and one of the better survival horror games that's come out in the last 10 years. Carly and her friend are, are and her coworkers are, are, you know, taking stuff. The face huggers get out, they tackle, and it's a very cool, intense scene. Uh, it ends with them kind of breaking through the glass, which you see in the trailer, and the girl's escaping. The problem is, is her friend has been infected, right? And the alien's coming. And, and this is, I think, what makes it work. She's freaking out, she's, she's foaming at the mouth, right? And Carly's doing her best to sort of calm her down. And her friend's basically asking, am I gonna die? She's freaking out. So this is a really intense scene. And she grabs this cool little portable x-ray machine and she kind of goes over her chest and you see the rib cage. And you see the silhouette of the alien trying to burst it out and you hear it crackling at the rib cage. And eventually it comes out. It's super bloody, super gory. So, you know, we're not going uh, old school PG-13 for Alien vs. Predator, right? In Covenant, do you remember when the alien comes out and it does that? Jesus Christ, Bose. It's like, yeah, uh, I'd rather be listening to Bad Motor Finger than watching that. This, though, does it right. The way the alien comes out, the, the look of it, very respectable and, and clearly a, a, a nod and an influence from the original 1979 alien. The way it looks, the sort of jagged movements. It's not fluid. It's not overly clean either. I, I think there's a bit of grittiness here that I, I've come to realize I think Fede understands more, hate to say it, than Ridley does at this point in his career. Um, you yeah, know, we get a montage. And then the final money shot of the actual alien, which again is going back far more to the the original and more again than, than Covenant. Because I know Covenant tried to bring the original look of the alien back, but it just seemed a little too updated and modern. This is not. This this feels a little more authentic. And every time I think I'm out, like they, they pull me back in. I really want a good alien movie, and I'm not gonna give my seal of approval yet. Because you never know. You can make a good trailer. They've all had good trailers, but the clip and the vibe and the tone and the sort of meanness, it, it gave me hope. It gave me hope. And the look, the look is very important to me and like they got that right. Again, remember, I don't need a Jesus Christ pose, my little alien, nah, don't be cute. Just give me something cool and visceral and mean and this seems to deliver. I think we have it, I think we have it. You know how people lived and died before they saw the Cubs win? I just want one good alien movie before I go and I'm hoping this is it. But besides that guys, uh, you know, please let us know what you thought. CinemaCon 2024, great. Never let me go. We got Aja's coming up. Uh, let's not forget about The Watcher, Shaman's daughter. Very interesting, very cool, very weird. And even Shaman himself with the trap. A serial killer. I, I, you know what? I think it's had a... And I think what's coming out is more optimistic than I've, uh, you know, that I've been excited for in a long time. So we shall see, but it, it's looking good. We might be eating well this year. Hey guys, appreciate it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you liked and uh, I'll see you next year.